On the next episode of Fathers Who Bother, I speak with record executive Shamani Excel about what it was like growing up in his Haitian household, why he planned his first child at 17 years old, and what it's like having daughters that are 20 years apart. Check it out. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Fathers Who Bother, a podcast for men who are dad as we want to be. My next guest is a Queens hip hop legend. This producer, DJ, manager, and record executive has been putting it down since the late 90s. He started out producing for Royal Flush, Tragedy, Gaddafi, and of course, 50 Cent. Over the next two decades, he added Juvenile, Snoop Dogg, Mob Deep, and Mac Miller to the long list of artists he's worked with. He founded Teamwork Music and was also president of G-Unit Records, VP of A&R, Def Jam Records, and Epic Records. In 2020, he released his first solo project, The Chain on the Bike, a compilation of emerging talent that he caught his cultivating ear. But today we are going to talk about his status as the ultimate girl dad and what it's like being a parent for as long as he's been making music. Please welcome Shaw Money XL to the podcast. Yo, thanks for having me, man. Bless you. What's good, man? How you been? I'm good, man. Been good, man. I mean, I've had better days. My dad is a little sick right now, but uh, okay, you know, just going through that process, trying to make sure he's comfortable and good. Okay. Get them home. You know what I mean? So that's that's what I'm dealing with right now. But other than that, I'm good. Bless up. Bless up. I, I imagine you and your dad are close. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. my pops, man. He was there for me. He was there every day of my life. You know what I'm saying? So I'm blessed to have that. So that man, you know what I mean? He's like a king to me for real. You know, I love to hear that. I love to hear that because yeah. I feel the same way about my dad. Um, I think I saw your Instagram post the other day where you were you were putting up a prayer for him, you know. So yeah, man. You know, I was mm-hmm. emotional that day, man. After seeing him just in pain, uncomfortable, and all that, you know, that shit. Sometimes with these hospitals, you be wanting them to help them, but sometimes it feel like it's hurting them, you know. So it's like I'm looking at it like a whole different way when I'm in there and I'm seeing him not in discomfort. I'm like, I just want him home. You rather know what I'm like I'd rather him be home than being that. Cause sometimes that love is more, more needed to, for the, for the healing. You know what I mean? So we're definitely going to send some prayers up for your pops, man. Thank so you, what, what, what was, um, what was your relationship like when you were growing up? Yo, pops is, uh, you know, I'm first generation born here in America from Haiti. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So he came with a whole different kind of, different kind of father, 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 son energy. Hmm. And in Haiti, you know, is based on, you know, for fathering, most of us is taught or learn how to father either from our dad ourselves or how we were fathered mm-hmm. or wh- whoever were the father figures in our life. So I think for my dad, you know, he learned from his dad and his dad was super strict. Like he didn't play at all, bro. He will pull the whip out and just, he'll have a horse whip with the beads at the end and Ooh. hitting you with that. You wow. know what I mean? And then he'll have, like my pops used to have me sitting in the corner looking at the wall on some pebbles on my knees, like they call it Ajenu. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know about that. I know about Ajenu. You know wow. about Ajenu? That's a real discipline, man. Mm-hmm. So so I'm, I was raised by, you know, the fact that my dad actually was strict, but on the same token, you see he was an entrepreneur. So you seen a side of a man where he was out here not going nine to five, he was creating his nine to five. For my whole life knowing him, I never seen him go work for someone. He always was doing construction jobs and different things to make the money. And he mm. brought the bread home. Mm. You know what I mean? So that was the first vision of seeing an entrepreneur for me mm-hmm. and someone who actually brought it home. And as bummy as we was as Haitian, as much as times we didn't have food, this dude still paid for my Catholic school. So he had me in a private school. You know what I mean? So mm. that's that's a whole nother blessing in itself because... I didn't have shit, smell like piss, but I was in Catholic school, you know what I'm saying? So so he raised me in a way where he gave in certain ways where he provided and gave you towards your future. But when it was a fatherhood type of thing, it wasn't communication wise. Mm. Plus he didn't speak the best of English. So that's where, it. and I I wasn't taught Creole early. So, you know, he was a father, but he wasn't like a big talking dad. You know what I mean? So you had to learn from what his discipline and from watching them. And then that's how you learn how to become who, that's how I was, you know what I mean, brought up. You know what I mean? Yeah, he, he speaks less and you, you follow his actions, you know, let, yeah. his, let, his, let his actions speak you for You see it, you know what I'm saying? You see it like, wait a second, all right, wait, you done brought a house in Brooklyn when you came from Haiti, how do you get that money? Then he brought the house next door. He said he brought mm. it for a thousand. 
we, they was on the rise Miss have in Brooklyn, you know what I'm saying? And then I'm like, wait a second, they were selling houses for a thousand. It was called the burnt house. So I'm learning shit from him. That's mm. business later. Like, wait, that's how I was doing it back in the days. Houses all burnt down. We in Flatbush, Brooklyn. He buying a house next door for a thousand dollars. Guess what? He's a construction dude. So he built it back up. Mm. Later on, he's selling it for close to a hundred and something change. Mm. And then we moved to Queens. And that's when I'm, that's when that's when my life started. Oh. So, you know, his story, his ways and everything stick with me. You know what I mean? All the way to my entrepreneurship, how I move, how hard I work and how I do it on my own without no bosses. You know what I mean? So you got the hustle from Pops for real. Pops and moms, both of them. Pops Super and moms too. Moms too. Oh, yeah. what, what? Moms both entrepreneurs. Oh, what do you do? What did your mom do? She's a bakery owner. They both own a bakery. That's dope. Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the they make the pate, the pate so gentil. Actually, the biggest, biggest Haitian bakery, bro. Which, what's it called? Le Bon Pain. That's yours? Yes, bro. <laughs> you understand? My wife's Haitian, so... Wow, we um go to um That's this sucks. place in Queens Village, Pate Gentil, yeah, to get yeah, our yeah. patties on Hempstead. On Hempstead, yep, yep, yeah. yep, yep. But you're, you, oh, I gotta go check yours out then. You got to, bro. You gotta pull up, bro. We run right up what, the street. You what? What's the location? You can shout it out. Uh, two twelve in Jamaica Avenue. Okay, Queens Village. Beautiful. Hempstead. Okay, yeah, I'm bro. I'm definitely gonna go grab yo because you know me a lot of. My, a lot of my, my weight over the years has been Haitian patties, yo. <laughs> Haitian food and Haitian patties. Food, the patties, that, all of that, you know, my mother-in-law, she makes the griot, yeah. you know, for the special yeah, occasions. That, that beat, that used to go down crazy. Everybody love that. The black rice. The black rice is my favorite. The favorite <laughs> rice I've ever made in life, bro. I said, I could eat that every day, but I don't eat rice every day, but I could eat that shit every day. That shit is crazy, yo. I'm the same way. I don't like white rice. I don't like, you know, because I will. My parents are Caribbean too. My father's was from Guyana. My mother's from Grenada. Oh, nice. So we GT. grew up. Yes, <laughs> white rice was a, every meal, no matter yeah. what. Every got, meal. Every, every meal. meal. I got this, so sick of it. But black rice, yeah, I, I will, roti and all of that with it. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah, the that's curry good. goat, the curry chicken. I just had that for that. lunch, bro. I just had some Guyanese food for lunch, bro. Yeah. So, Where'd you get it? Where'd you get it from? Village Roadie Shop, Queens. Ah, see, I ain't been out to the spots in a while. You know, I've been hunkering down with this. You know, I don't go out too much. You know, with this COVID <laughs> shit. So, I More just got my, still. I just got my vaccine a couple of weeks ago. So I'm slowly making my way back out into the world, but I don't go too far out. But um, no, I don't blame you. You got to stay <laughs> safe, man, and it's good, man. Stay how how safe. how has your family been? coping with all of this well, so for us i mean march was a crazy march and april was crazy for the business but mm. that's what savings is for you know what i mean you got to be prepared for days like this you know right. and and when it got hit you know we had to call 311 see if we was deemed essential and we was essential and we were serving nurses and hospitals and doctors coming at the bakery five in the morning six in the morning before their shifts nice. ems workers so once they deemed us essential, you know, we opened up and and we, you know, it was slow, but we was we stayed committed and committed to the community and to the to the essential workers. And we just stuck to it. And I mean, at the end of the day, things got better gradually and and we we in it to win it. So we won, you know. So do you be in the shop sometimes, like actually working oh, in the factual, shop? Oh, factual, bro. I've been in there since 12, bro. I've been Sorry. in my shop since I was 12 years old, man. That's all I know, bro. Like, I've been working there since 12 years old, bro. For real. Words. I would literally do the whole, every session you probably knew from G-Unit, and then on the weekends, go work there just to make my bread, yo. So that was the hustle, the, the, the help yeah. with the music. Yeah. With the, the family bakery. Yeah, you know. So what, what, what are you good at? What what what's the thing that you are like, yo? I'm, I get I'm good at making patties. You know what I mean? Oh. I'm, I'm good. We good bakers. So the whole family, my grandfather was a baker, my mother's a baker, my sister's a baker, my brother's a baker, I'm a baker, my niece, my nephew, we all bakers. It's a family lineage. Like we all were taught how to bake. And then of course, shout out to all the employees as well that they're put in, you know, this is a family recipe that's been us with us for Close to 60 years, bro. 67 years, a recipe. And of course, enhanced with, with the more American flavors with that, you know, the seasonings, but still the same Haitian taste. 
See, if you guys listening have not had that Haitian beef patty, I know a lot of New Yorkers, y'all, we grew up on the Jamaican beef patties, which are phenomenal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not it's knocking different, those it's at all. A different life. It but different. the Haitian beef patty is a different experience. <laughs> I'm telling right. you, it's like a flaky, almost like a croissant. It's, it's like a stuffed croissant. Puff pastry. Like a Puff real pastry. Puff pastry. Yeah. You know? And man, oh. <laughs> You got to um, pull up, bro, because you're like, <laughs> you going to love my spot, bro. We real bakers, bro. Oh, and, uh, word. It's a full-edge bakery. Our products is in supermarkets and all of that. So, like, we about to take it to next levels, even with the frozen patties and everything. So, it's serious, bro. I love it. You know, I love it. We like trying to be the, the Haitian version of Golden Cross out this piece. You know what I mean? <laughs> Do it. Yeah. Do it. I'll definitely yeah. support. I'll definitely support. Oh man, I love this. Rest in peace, Law Lauren Hawthorne, the owner. Oh yeah. yeah okay. Too. Ah, shout out money to baker. I know. I mean, I know you know how to bake that bread, but I know you knew how to bake that bread. Bake, you know bake, what I'm nah, saying? Nah, real bakers, man. I mean, I can make cocoa bread. We can we can make some bread. We can make some patties. We gonna we gonna bake them. We gonna we gonna go we gonna go crazy, bro. It's in my ethic, bro. We nine jobbers, Haitians and West Indians, bro. <laughs> we nine jobbers, even with the bread, bro. I don't, you know what I mean? It's just in me, man. I'm not bad at that at all. You know. So, I mean? so take me to. You have a squad. If I'm counting correctly, you have five girls or four. Yeah, six six girls, one one son. Six girls yeah. and one son. Yeah. Okay. Who who's the oldest? My oldest is my daughter, Sinaja. So okay, that's the one I'm 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 thinking of. So yes. I always ask everybody about the time they found out they first found out they were gonna be a dad. So do you remember when you first found out you were having your first daughter, your oldest daughter? Yo, this is the craziest shit right here, right? <laughs> she was my only planned child. Okay. My first child was my only planned child. You planned it. Okay. Okay. Planned her. Okay. Right? Now, hear this story. I was mm-hmm. 17 years old. I just got caught in Albany selling some drugs. So mm-hmm. I had to go do my time. Mm-hmm. I was out on bail, but I was about to get sentenced. Mm-hmm. So before I got sentenced, I said, I want to come home to a daughter that I'm going to have to be responsible for, not a daughter, a child that I have Mm. to be responsible for. And I'm going to have a baby with my girlfriend. So by the time I'm home, she come and then I'm going to be focused. Like I'm going to get on track because I was wilding out, selling drugs. I was doing all kinds of other shit, trying to make money to to buy this equipment. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I got caught. I had to do a year in jail. And my baby mother at the time that I met in job for was my girl. And, um, I breeded her. I got her pregnant and I knew it. I, and right before I went, I knew she was pregnant. And I knew when I was coming home, I was coming home to who's now my daughter, Sinatra. She was my first child. That I, I think my only planned child. What did you, your, your girlfriend at the time say to you when you went to her and said, this is your plan? What was going you through know, her head? Um, I think... She didn't have an option at that time. Wait, what? I was like, yo, she was living with me, yo. We was coming out of Job Corps. She in my crib. She lived in my crib, yo. So we was, it was one of those things where it just was going to happen. So, you know what I mean? So I don't think- So y'all were already doing the do. I don't think it was a conversation. I don't think it was You just took all the safety nets off. No, it's just, this is what it is. Wow. Y'all took the safety nets off and was like, Da, 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 da. Yeah, you know what I mean. She was, she was, she was my girl. So I was like, I right, have, have my daughter with her, and boom, that's what I did. Wow. I said daughter, but I was in. I didn't know I was gonna have a daughter. Okay, so you get home, and w- what was it like being a dad when you came home? So um, for me, it was amazing, man. Uh, here's my daughter. She comes into this earth. And just a beautiful daughter, and I'm just happy to have, and she's healthy and good, and we like just taking care. She live with me, like it's not like I'm going to see her on the weekends. Like we, she, her, her mom's live with me. So, mm-hmm. mind you, I'm I'm 18 years old. I was 17 years old when I planted her. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm 18 years old, coming out of jail. My mom's is allowing me to 
just come out of jail as well as live with my baby moms. She wouldn't let my brother do that. She wouldn't let my sister do that. But she did that so I could stay home. Mm. So she let me do that. So I stayed home and that's where the beat started, like being making music and all that. So going hard, come home from jail and starting to get on track. So she was a part of that whole focus thing, like how to get off the streets and get off the bullshit I was doing and have something to live for and have something mm. to be responsible for. And she was a part of that program that straightened me out. You know what I mean? And what was your father thinking? I'm thinking yo, Pops, Haitian. honestly, he ain't never said nothing, yo. No, you lying. Never the said Haitian nothing. father had nothing to say about yo, him. Hey, going never, to jail yo, oh, and then coming that, home with oh, a baby. That, yo, no, nah, that is he was ashamed of me. I was like the yo, I, at that moment, everybody was looking at me like, what the what what? Jail? Who the what? You going to jail? Like that shit was fucked up for the family. I was like, right. The outcast at that moment. So he just probably quieted down on me. He didn't think he could fix it or something. So he he just kind of like fell back a little bit. Mm. And I was in jail and I had to be be a man and live, figure this shit out. And that was life's lesson. And that's what he probably knew, you know. If I if I can if I can't teach you, life won't teach you. So did, did did having the baby straighten you out? Did you really were you involved, Dad? Were you were you that kind of dad, or were you still yeah, running yeah. the street? Yeah, no, I was involved. Yeah. Involved. I was taking her to school, taking mm -hmm. her to everything, being with her, changing diapers, the whole thing, man. Baby sitting with her, if you want to call it that, or just being with my daughter because she's mm -hmm. with me and her mom's is at work. You know what I mean? So, like, I had I had raised my daughter. You know what I mean? Oh wow! So you said that she was the first plan. So when did the when did the next one come? Yo, her brother came, um, probably like five years after or something. Okay, that's a that's and, a pretty um, big. Well, it's planned. reasonable because you were young, so I can yeah, I can see why yeah. you would wait. Yeah. So I was like, um, so yeah, he came. I was twenty three, I think, or something like that. And and when he came, you know. I was like, oh shit, I didn't plan it. He, he came, boom, I have a son. Now I got a pair, a boy and a girl. It was a beautiful thing, man. So 23, what? where were you in your career at that point when you had your son? What was uh, going on? I was uh, producing. That's when I was just getting my start doing Call Mega and some of the stuff that I was doing on the underground, interning at Def Jam. I was doing all of that at that time. Mm -hmm you know, interning at Def Jam and um, just trying to still get on. I wasn't on, I, um, I met Jay and met 50, but we wasn't actually in that that phase yet. You mm -hmm. know, that happened about three more years after. And um, your Def so Jam I was just intern. grinding. I was grinding as a producer. Mm -hmm. And uh, like I said, going to the shop, being a baker and doing all of that. And then um, that was my life and raising my kids. So you got a boy and you got a girl. Are you thinking, okay, I'm good. I'm done. Yeah, I was done. <laughs> I was done. Yeah. You said, I'm done. And said, done. so then. So that was, that, that was 1999 when he was born. And I, was, I thought I was done. So I didn't have my next one until 2003. Okay. That's a good little distance yeah. between them. Um, um, so what was it like having the boy and the girl before we get to the next one? Like. Did we were because I know a lot of dudes they, they raised their boys different from their girls. Yeah. They're, so now nah, I mean I was liking getting him fresh, buying him all the fly clothes, you know <laughs> what I'm saying? Having him match with me, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Having him chill, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And you know, so I was like, I was proud, man, having my son, I had my daughter, and it was we was chilling, living together. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was a good moment just to see, you know, them grow up and, and being able to have them every day in my life. And that, you know, that happened for a certain time until, until me and their moms broke up. And then they, then we, then I had to move, then I moved out. Oh, okay. Yeah. So when did the th third child come along? This is your um, second daughter? Third, third child came along in 2003. Okay. 2003 now, you know what I'm saying? This is shot Money Excel. Like the album 50 just dropped. 26 years old, just turned a millionaire. I'm lit. Like, I, you can't tell me shit at this time right here. Right, right. So this is my, this is my, this is my rich baby, my million dollar baby, right? Like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm feeling good that she's spoiled. Everybody's spoiled, but she's like coming into me being in my best 
you know what I mean, at, at my, my life at that time. And um, so she was she was born in that year when the album came out. Uh, she was born that November. So it was a it was a big deal for me. It was a big it was a celebration. And so what's what's your dad thinking now? You did he talk to you about, you know, parenting that now you Yo, let me tell you, you know, this is crazy. He never parented me in a way of me having kids or even never said nothing, mm -hmm. especially at that moment of my life when I was 26 years old literally buying my own houses and having everything like money and all that. So he was proud of me because I turned my life around, right? From where mm. I was heading. And okay. the whole thing with me, if everyone know me, I was like infatuated, like idolized Bob Marley. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I used to tell my baby mother, the first one, like, yo, you know, I want a child in every race. Like I want, like, you know, <laughs> I used to say wild shit like that. Like I used to do crazy shit and say shit like that. And I used to always be into Bob Marley and how he did his thing and like, just like how he left all these beautiful kids and had his legacy still planted and all of them still look like him, even different mothers. And they all like, I loved it, bro. I was infatuated with his story and sorry, man. I've had that vision in my head, um, was a crazy vision. And um, that kind of pissed my first baby mama off. And then um, I tried it again with the second one, so. That's that's when um you know my pops nobody said nothing to me because I they already knew what time I was on at that moment. Oh my goodness! The scene is coming together. Shaw Money Appleseed. Shaw Marley. That's what they call me. <laughs> Shaw <Shy> Marley. <laughs> that's what the homies call me. The ones that know, they know. You know, we was we was going all the way in, bro. I was gonna have every yeah Haitian and Asian, Haitian and Indian, everything, bro. It was about oh. to be crazy. Oh no, my goodness. Down. So are all of your, at this point, the first three, they're all still, they're living with you? No. So at this point, mm -hmm. the two, the two, um, they stayed in the house that I had and I went and moved somewhere else, mm -hmm. you know, cause I was separated. And, mm -hmm. um, that's when I met the mother of my third daughter. Mm -hmm. And, um, that's, she was, she, she was living with me at that moment okay. when, when, um, when I was with her mom. So when did when did the third daughter come around? Oh, 2003. So that she, was so the son, I'm trying to keep them all straight. 99. Before. My son mm -hmm. was 99. Okay. So there was daughter, then son, daughter, son, then daughter, daughter. in yes. 2003. Yeah. That's that's the second daughter. Third kid, yes. second daughter. Yeah. So but you you didn't stop there. No. <laughs> you had a third no. daughter. Yes. <laughs> when did she come along? Yo, she came along, truthfully, uh, when I hit the road, yo, I, I went to Arizona mm -hmm. and, um, you know, I saw something I, I was feeling out there and it was her mama. You know? Shout out to One Stop, Arizona, <laughs> hot ass yeah. Arizona. Woo. Yeah, so, you know, I went out there and, um, you know, so you, it so you happened, see. you know, and that's her mother. <laughs> I was and cooking up more than beats in Arizona, man. Yeah, no, I loved Arizona. And that's, you know, once I met up with her moms, I started, I brought a crib out there. Mm. You know, I started a business out there and then I brought the conference out there. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and uh, so we started our life out there. We had a house out there, the house in, in New York. And she, you know, we, that was my prime. So we was, I was moving and we was, things was happening. So I was able to go back and forth and, um, and raise my daughter. And that was, that was my, my, my third child. Okay. Yeah. And then um, I noticed at this point, you there's a pattern with yeah. the way you named them. Yeah. You got this this S thing going. Yeah, yeah. What, my son talk? is Sahim. My uh -huh. daughter is Sinesia, And Soraya, my third, she's Soraya. So all S's. What, what inspired that? It's kind of fly. Yo, I'm a sequence dude. I'm a Fibonacci type of guy. Like, I like certain sequences and certain things to be certain ways. And... I love S, Shaw Money. That's what I love, Shaw. So everybody is going to follow the tribe of S's. And that's what we're doing. Oh, that's what's up. I was wondering, because I was looking, I was going through your Instagram. I was like, S, 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 S. Oh, okay. I see, I see yeah, a trend. All of them. All of them. <laughs> all of them. They love it, too. Yeah? Yeah, they're going to pick up a different letter for their kids. Oh, Okay. And that's what one keep, of them told me. That's what they all said? 
Yeah, like I'm gonna pick an L and just everybody gonna be Larry, Latrice, <laughs> <laughs> Lenny. I'm joking, but that's what they was on. They 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 got with it. They love it. They love it. And 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 their mothers, they're they they're cool. They've been cool with keeping this tradition going. Yeah, facts. Yeah, yeah. that's the with the program. <laughs> it's a shot money program. <laughs> oh, it's a beautiful family too. And I noticed that some of them have um similar birthdays or some or around the same time. Yes. Like there are a couple of them are, are November. Well, actually, babies. two of them okay. that are like 10 years apart have the same birthday. Why? Same exact birthday. How did you pull that off? Yeah. Yeah, and she's my fifth child. Fifth. She's what the fifth is, one. And, and she has the same birthday as the first one. Wow. So five kids later. Yeah. They had the same birthday. So you guys right, do anything? On. Wait, wait one more day. Wait one more day. <laughs> wait. Wait. They're like, nope, it's happening today. Oh, wow. They got the same birthday, yo. Same exact birthday. And they're how many how many years apart are they? Um, I would like to say about eleven years apart, 10, 10 or eleven years apart. Okay. Yeah, man, they they fall apart, man. So it's all divine timing, man. So do they? Uh, well, eleven years apart, they uh, they wouldn't have birthdays together, but have they ever like celebrated together in any way? Um, yeah, no, we've had birthday parties together, celebrated together, and put it together, and you know. And then they have their separate, you know, you know, especially on those pivotal points like the 16s or the mm-hmm. sweet, whatever, you know. Right, all, right, right. All those type of things they have it separately, you know. Okay. Okay. So we I've been keeping count. So that we're up to that was five. We skipped four. Okay. We went to five because five matched. You asked me the question about, about the birthday. So if so yeah. double back to 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 previous that's yeah the- so yeah we got to because that's sabrina sky you know and and she's she's my angel in heaven you know she's my daughter that passed away from sudden infant death oh no i'm, I'm yeah sorry. yeah she was two months years old she was brought into this world and we only had her for two months man so what year what year was this this was 2000 she was actually born a year later four days apart from from soraya Okay. So they call, I forgot what kind of twins they call it, but they were literally the same t- sign and four days apart by birthday. Wow. One was, yeah, November, November 8th and November 12th. Yeah. Wow. Sabrina, <coughs> my, my daughter's name is Sabrina. That's, 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 beautiful yeah, Sabrina name. Scott. That was my baby. Rest in peace, my daughter. Oh, yeah. so I've been having this kind of, I, Interestingly enough, or coincidentally enough, I've been having this conversation with a few brothers that on the podcast about losing a child, which is something a lot of people don't talk about or know how to cope with. And everybody has a different um, answer. You know, I was talking to Glenn Turman, the actor, you know, I was asking him about it and um, some other folks, how do you deal with that? And sometimes he was like, there's not anything you stop doing. You know, it's something that you can't, that you're continually dealing with, you know, like the way you say you still bring, you bring her name up and, you know, you don't let her be forgotten. You know what I'm saying? Never, never, ever. I I opened up a business store and named it after her with with her moms and everything. And, uh, you know, she's forever with me. She's tatted on my body. I I never, her birthdays, I'll be crying and stuff. So Mm. it'd be deep, bro, you know? Cause we had to bury her. She was a, she was here. It wasn't like a stillborn or something like that. She actually made it and was here, and to see that happen, it was just was hurt so hurtful, man. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I didn't immediately do therapy. I, I just was just trying to stay busy and try to you know, it's certain ways people deal with stuff. But I dealt with it later in my life. You know what I mean? And I, I, I dealt with my my issues with it. And you know, how did you go about doing that? I did a little therapy, you know what I mean? And then I, I did a lot more um, Bible studies and stuff like that, get my faith and spirituality stronger, you know what I mean? And just get my knowledge of God and and just started just, just being on a different path with certain things, like, you know? How, how did you talk about that with her siblings? 
Um, so they they were young, mm-hmm. um, and so so Soraya was only a year 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 old, so she didn't know her. Mm-hmm. And then the other two siblings, um, they only had her in their life for two months, mm-hmm. and I don't think we ever sat down and spoke about it. Hmm. Never. Hmm. Other than the morning that we did together. Right. For the right. burial and everything like that. Because for me, it just, you know, I just, that I, I, like I said, I had to deal with it later. So at that time, I wasn't even in a position to be able to help anyone else because I was so hurt behind it. Of course. Every, everybody in their own time, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Everybody yeah. in their own time deals with, with stuff. Um, so after Sabrina, who was after Sabrina? Sabrina's after Sabrina was Sadie and Sadie Sadie was Sadie's my fifth child. Okay. Who was was the same birthday as the first child. Okay. Is Sadie, is she the one that plays the cello? I can't remember if it's, uh, no, no, that's Sophia. Sophia. Yeah. Okay. Sophia Loren. So. What do your kids think of daddy's career? Do they know that daddy is Shaw Money XL? No, not nah, honestly, because <laughs> they was never really in, the the two older do. So they cool, they they over it, right? Because in their eyes, it took it took me away from them. You know what I mean? So they not fans of certain things of the music part that where you say so working that you know before I was a man where I could commit the time and know how to do it. Mm-hmm. I was not balanced in that. I was working all the time. So, so many, so many years, they didn't get to have me. But the holidays, it was one year that I was probably home for three days in, in New York, 20 days the whole year. So certain things that messed up that. So I know it hits them a little bit differently when it comes to, to the hip hop or the success part. They love it because, of course, they benefit from it. But there's another side of it, too, you know? Mm. I was wondering about that with with MCs, especially ones with daughters, because hip hop has not been kind to women. So mm-hmm. <laughs> at least sometimes yeah. in, in the subject matter. So I'm always curious um, about how their kids feel about the music. No, nah, they love it. You know, they're mm-hmm. proud of me. Even the older ones now that's now they're seeing it. And like, oh, wow, you did that. They seeing certain things and right. certain, just kind of now because their friends is watching and listening to hip hop. But when they were younger, it didn't really matter to them. Right. when they start listening to music and loving music and they're like, oh, wait, oh, dad, you made a beat? Like, you make beats? Like, what? Okay. Like, you play the piano? So I put one in piano school. So why are you pushing me to do this? Because look, look what it did for me. I told my moms I didn't want to do it. She put me in it. Look, I'm making beats. Like, you never know what your path is going to be. I didn't choose it, but she put it in me because I I didn't even know. You know what I'm saying? But that's, a, that's something she wanted me to do because in Haiti, you either got to play soccer or play piano. That's the two things they want you to do as a another activity. Right. You know what I mean? So I took on the piano. I tried to put one of my daughters on. The other one took on the cello and everything else, horns and, and choruses and all of that. So they still in it. But once they get older, they get into hip hop. That's when they started getting it. You know? That's so. I love that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> the, mu- the musical maestro. You just building a band over there. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, they got their own, none of them want to be in the music business, but they got the whole thing in them. Some of them got it installed in them just, just by playing instruments. What What are some of their aspirations? And your oldest is now what, in her early 20s? What is she? Yeah, yeah, she's in her 20s. Mm-hmm. Um, she already graduated college. Mm-hmm. Um, she, she has a, a degree in communications. So she's on her path. You know, she's working and doing things that, that means a lot to her. Mm-hmm. and dear to her and, and and she's on her journey she's learning her way um as we do in our 20s and and she's still figuring it out and she's about to get to the point where she got it figured out neither of them no djs yet no djs no djs, no DJs. yet <laughs> my son is into fashion he's into fashion heavy design, okay stuff like that so he he's more of a fashion kid so he likes that that's his world okay and so he, he wants to he, he designs the clothes and stuff yeah, he's designing, you know, he's from the era of the thrifting, you know, the cool kid era. And, and you know, he's in college in New York. So he's, you know, he's in that whole world of fashion. Okay. 
And so the count now, we're up to who now? Are we up to Sia yet? No, we're not up to Sia yet. We okay. Have, now, now is number six. Well, uh-huh. number, wait, one. See, I'm losing. <laughs> that was crazy, y'all. <laughs> Now we up to I got six. mad kids, six. son. Yo, I said five. Now we up to number six, and that's Sophia Loren. Sophia. Sophia Loren. Barack Clairvoy. That's say her that, real name. Say, say that again. Sophia Loren Barack Clairvoy. Wow. That's her full name, and her first name is Sophia Loren. You have to say Loren. It's like a tribe called Quest. Together, you got to say. You have to say it. <laughs> Sophia Loren. It's not to Sophia. Sophia yeah. Loren. Yeah. That's her first name. So you know and I have to Barack, ask. Because she was born in January when he was inaugurated. And that meant so much to me that mm. I had to time stamp it with her name on her birth certificate. So she know she was born when we had a black president. And why Sophia Loren? Because she's beautiful. And my baby's beautiful. And Sophia's beautiful. So they that's what I, I just love the name. From the time I heard that name and the time I ever seen that woman, I, she was a beautiful woman. And I said, I'm going to name one of my daughters, Sophia Loren. Okay. Sophia Loren. And she um, she plays the cello. Yes. Okay. Because I saw that you went to one of her concerts. Yeah, man. I'm a daddy, daddy, girl, dad, man. I'm over there doing all of the concerts, the play dates and the drop-offs and the pickups and the driving school and the driving dad, all of that shit. The whole thing. I'm in, I'm full force. Full I'm force. Not a weekend dad. <laughs> so um, what do you think of her, her cello skills? She, she, she's, she's, she's good. No, she's good. She's good. So she's playing cello, flute, cabernet, cabaret, what is it? Something, cabaret something. She's playing it. She's all, <laughs> <laughs> in the one section family, she likes the, the flute and all of that. So, oh, she's doing it, but she's more into gymnastics. She she can flip and she'll run around here and be doing tossing and turning and full of energy. So she's my little gym, gymnast. Okay. And she goes to school for that. So that's more of her passion. Okay. And she just graduated. I saw you saw a class of twenty twenty. She that was middle school. Yeah, she's done with middle. She's done with yeah. She started middle school. She, she started middle school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Sixth grade. So how have they all been managing the, the, the school-age ones um, over the last year? Have they been work, doing school from home or are they going in? Have they been so, going um, in? Here in Long Island, they go to school one day and then they go online. Okay. And they go on school, like it goes back and forth. Okay. And today, they didn't want to go to school, so they went virtual. So they have the option as well. Hmm. And so they, you know, they love being home. Um, two of them, they both go to high school here. So, and they chilling. Okay. So they've been all right. Cause my, my son graduated from high school. He was class of 2020. Oh, nice. So he, yeah, he didn't get to do the prom thing. Oh, he didn't get to the, do that. Yeah. They had everything like e- the graduation was like mostly virtual. Like we got to go and walk across the stage and take pictures, but it was like, no, you walked across the stage and then you walked out the gym. Like there was no hanging out. <laughs> everybody had to take their turn. Mm-hmm. And then they did the, um, you know, everybody in the, the cars driving, but they did like a parade, a car parade, you know, for the, for the graduates. But yeah, they didn't get to do a lot of the traditional. Uh, yeah. That's, that sucks, man. For all of the graduates of 2020, they didn't get to that full feeling, which is a great feeling to be sent off with that mm-hmm. graduation. Cause I seen it with my niece's graduation and it was amazing, you know? Right. Those those right. are really monumental moments in their lives, man. It's just taken away. Yeah. He's he's been a good sport about it though. He's he just he's in college now out in Long Island and he's he's doing really, really well. Nice. So nice. He, nice. All things considered, he's he's taking it in stride. You know what I'm saying? Nice. I gotta take him back out and finish his driving Congrats lessons. To him, man. He did it. Next did level. It. Next level. Next level. So we're doing the, the we're doing the kid countdown on fathers who bother with Shaw Money XL. We're now <laughs> fathers, that's right. We real fathers, man. For real. So Boy, now for real. Committed. So now we're up to um, after Sophia came. Who? My, my Sia. Sia. My Sia. My one. My num. My one year old baby. Woo! One and a half. She's Brother, when I 
when I saw that, I said, shock, because we're about the same age. Yeah. And I could not see myself changing diapers <laughs> at this age. Yeah. <laughs> Especially after having <laughs> raised and had ones that are older, starting with the so, so to, talk to me now, because I know there's, a, there's some stories about this, this beautiful one, this, this little one. Yeah, I mean, Marcia was just a blessing, man, you know, because, you know, like you said, we in our older ages, chilling, just we could be done having kids, but uh, met this beautiful woman, you know, and, uh, you know, things progressed and um, had a baby. And, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll never, ever say, like, you know, we can't have no baby. We're going to bring it to this earth and, and and take care of this baby and love on our baby. And Sia was a surprise because I didn't plan it. And, you know, me and her moms, we just, we knocked it out. And to me, this one was real special because she was born in our house. Mm -hmm. And she was like, literally, her moms were so cool. And she's like a naturalist where she she didn't want to go to the hospital and do all of that and be put on this and be put on that to have a baby. She wanted us to get me to get the pool, put it in our bedroom, and she's going to sit there until the baby come out. And that's what she did right in the house. And what it was, was an amazing experience. It's one of the best experiences of my life. What? Yeah. Like, what was it like being in that? This is your house and your room, you know, presumably where she's conceived and now she's being. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Like, yeah, you went from the bedroom to the water to right there. Like, right. Right. It was right. Awesome. And, and at the end of it, we didn't have to go to no hospital bed. We went right to bed. You mm. know what I mean? And that was the best part of life, just having that experience without all these injections and vaccines and all this immediate stuff that they put into us and not mm -hmm. having that way of life happen to us. And for, for to know that you can actually create that and it can happen and it's safe and you can do it, we did it. And I thank her, Valeria, for that because that was an amazing experience. And she was brave and she she really wanted to do that. And she taught mm. me things that I was like, no, nah, let's go to the hospital, call the EMS. No, nah, she's crying, she's crying. So once I, like, you can see the pain, mm -hmm. and my sister coaching, my, her mom's is there. And then we have the life coach that's doing all the, the telling her what to do. And then we, the fetus and all of this stuff that I'm like, placenta. And I mean, you know, all of this craziness, I'm touching in my hands and I'm like, what? Like right there in the house, yo. And it was amazing, yo. The illest thing I ever, and I videotaped it. I had two cameras, you know what I mean? Go, GoPro and a whole nother 5D type thing trying to clash in. She's yelling at me. I'm like talking into the camera like I'm in pain, but I'm not. It was hilarious, yo. She hates me for that day because I just made it a movie, yo. I made it <laughs> a comedy special. Yeah. <laughs> She's, she's in the middle of labor and you got three cameras going. You're doing your Spike Lee angles. Turning the back right behind her head. Like, we having a baby. She's screaming, get out of my face. Like, <laughs> it's crazy, yo. It was an awesome night, man. Was that After your... He's downstairs. Everybody's like, what? You having a baby upstairs? Um, was that the first time you were in the delivery room? No, not okay. the first. Okay. Not the first. Definitely been in a delivery room about two times prior. Okay. And then others, I think, were C-sections, so you can't be in that. Right, right. Yeah, right. I think so. Not till, the, not till the very end. Yeah, Yeah, I think no. so. I think, yeah, I, I filmed like two of them, too. This is the third one. So I was like the guy with the camera there doing all of that. <laughs> I still got the footage. <laughs> so what, what do you have to say? I don't know. I, I don't like to use the word advice, but like, if you could convey what it's like to be a father of that many children, what does that mean for you? And, you know, in terms of your fulfillment and, you know, what, what does that feel like? Because I have two that I feel like that's enough. That's beautiful. I was good at two, but you got six, <laughs> you know, what does that feel like? Yo, you might have the good. record. You and Royce might be tied. I got to check, but I think you might Royce have. Got? I thought Royce only I, had a son. No, he got a lead. You check his Instagram. He got one, two, three, four, at least four. Four. But you might be tied with Royce for the guest with the most kids. Well, no, you haven't beat. 
<laughs> I got to beat, right? He had, he had, I think, I think he had the record before you. I think he, you got him beat now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nah, it's a blessing, man. Um, mm-hmm. And what, what, was it, what was your question, though? Um, what is it like having that many kids? And, Yo, for know, me, um, mm-hmm. like I said, it was planned. Like, I wanted to do that. I want to have a family. I want to increase my odds of not going to an old folks home because this shit is lethal out here. <laughs> Somebody love me. Keep me with you, man. Keep me at the house with you, man. Don't send me off. Like, I'm. that's why I'm proud to go get my dad because it's not cool, man. And it's like. I don't want I don't want that experience in life ever, and I don't want so I'm gonna teach him, and I'm about to bring my dad home and bring him here. Like, yo, this is what we do. Like, as soon as he got out this hospital, we gonna hold him down, and that's what you're gonna do for me because you're gonna see me do that, and that's what we gonna teach him. Because some of this stuff they need to see it to be mm-hmm. taught it. You could tell them it, but it's also an experience when they see it. You know what I mean? So. A lot of things now with my daughters, I bring them with me so they can see it. They can experience it. A lot of things they they learn is from conversations and then me showing them things as the conversation unfolds in front of them. So it's, it's communication more, which I didn't, I picked up on this new generation coming that I had to add that. I wasn't taught that, you know what I mean? So now we in a level where we're communicating on a great level, you know what I mean? And 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 just trying to find that unity of bond and just family first teach them that because you know they could run to the friends and all that but at the end of the day family is everything and just trying to keep them knowing that they got enough of them to hold each other down and then you know you know me my brother and sister we we did this held each other down and held each other up they got even more of them plus their nieces nephews so they got a bigger family to do what we did and keep making it bigger from the business, the bakery, the family business that's never to be sold, and and to my music catalog that's to never be sold. Even with all these people approaching me, I have money that's perpetual that will last past the lifetime of mine that I could pass down to them so they can have that. And then they're taught to the generational wealth started, and now they have to teach that to their kids. So it's all about what I give them and show them and teach them and for them to keep that tradition and to carry that on. So that's what's important for me and with them and everything that I'm teaching them now. I'm saying, look, you see these records, you see I'm collecting them, you're laughing at them, right? But each record right now is a, a worth, some are worth a hundred dollars each. The less is the least is twenty dollars. So you look at my collection now, and if you ever had a rainy day and you did when I'm gone and long gone and this is here and this is for you, this is money for you that I saved. Mm-hmm. That is in a way where you're gonna my collection of art, my collection of hip hop toys and all kind of toys and all kind of stuff that values increases away from stupid ass clothes and chains and shit like that. You know what I mean? Things that you, they actually can have a value even longer. That's what I'm, I'm showing them and that's what I'm teaching them. And that's what I'm hoping that they can carry that type of tradition that even my parents has brought on to me, showing me with the bakery, you know what I mean? And being able to be able to have them retire and hold them down and then be able to, to do that for my kids and let them carry that tradition as well as my nieces and nephews. Word. What's the best thing about being a girl dad? Yo, the best thing, man, the girls have more compassion for dads. Sons be on some bullshit sometimes, bro. This, so they they have more love for the mom, like for the for the, for their moms. And then they but the girls, they love their dad. So I get a lot of love for my daughters and just just, you know. Just, just, it's just a, it's, it feels good when, when, you know, you just taking care of your baby. So they know they ain't got to run to no crazy punk ass dude or anything. Cause they dad is here. Like they got this and they like, they don't got to do run fast in a hurry to do anything stupid. They, they got their time and they got a man in their life that's teaching them values and love and giving to them and not having to run to the world for it. So, mm. I mean, for me, it's a blessing and, and it's for them, I know it's a blessing. So, it's a compliment that, you know, that keeps me excited to want to make, continue to be successful, continue to build for my kids, knowing that they're going to have kids, knowing that we're going to have a legacy. So I'm building towards all of that. And that's why you keep having them. <laughs> yeah, man. It's the, it's the Marley Foundation, man. We about to have an island, yo. We about to have our own island, yo. Not Haiti, though. We ain't going back there. It's too crazy, bro. What do you think is the biggest difference between being a father to Sia 
than being a father to Sanas the, from the first the, yeah it's a big difference and I, you know I, I, I'm I learned and uh you know I always tell my daughter you know I, I know my mistakes as mm. a young man I was uh 17 when I had her so I wasn't even a man yet I didn't mm. learn to be a man way till later so you know the time I'm there with see every way I'm in her life in a, an amazing way daily I'm not on the road. I'm not chasing or being in music and doing that. Like I'm doing that in a balance now. So mm-hmm. she's getting the best balance of me, the most, most, you know, most just there, right? Present in a way where you, you time is the best thing in life, man, that you need with anyone. And if you have that, that's how you build everything. And she's getting that with me. So I'm there for her, man. And I'm, I'm giving that to all my children as well, but her just being there, me and her moms being together, we're gonna be together and hold and raise her and just just rock it out. So I guess my last question is: Do you have a a, t- a squad or team or other men that you talk to about parenting in your life, like your your boys that have kids? You know, nobody that I talk to about parenting. Nah, not really. Hmm. Okay. We don't. We have group chats with the homies, but it's never about parenting. Hmm. I don't think. Not about the kids. Not like yo, so and so's doing this today. Da, 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 da. No, no. Nobody. Interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like business. Cause, cause for the- us, it's really family. So they know their cousins and all of that, and we always doing that. But it's never really like. Nah, yeah, it's crazy. Okay. Now, I always ask that because, um, you know, that's something in addition to having my father in my life, which I'm eternally grateful for. Mm -hmm. I was lucky to have men who are also having kids around the same time that I could talk to, you know, so I could be like, I was having kids way before every all my homies. I was Mm -hmm. 17. Mm -hmm. So they was by the time they're having kids in their late 20s and 30s. My daughter's is ready 12 and 13. Mm -hmm. And like, so it's like, you know. The time difference, I was ahead of them. And yeah. then now we catching up. Now I got my boy Cass and his son and they play with my kids, stuff like that. We get together right. for occasions and stuff like that. And and my girl has her friends and with their kids the same age. So stuff like that. But I still ain't get that group text yet with the with the, the dads. And now we ain't do that yet. <laughs> we get those May- chats going. Maybe, maybe you'll start one up. Maybe you'll start one up. <laughs> yeah, right. You know how men, you know, as men, we be too prideful for certain things. I don't know, but you know, my homies, they on different time, you know. <laughs> I don't want to talk um, about other shit. I hear you. Well, Shaw, man, yo, thank you so much. This this has been the most fun countdown ever. <laughs> <laughs> A real one. Five, four, three, two, five, one. Four, three, two, six, Seven, six, six five, five, four, four three, three, two, one. <laughs> Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And you get them all, bro. It's all seven. Oh, man. Divine seven. time. It's the godly number. I love yes. it. But thank you so much, brother, for sharing this and, and opening you. up. And, you know, you all, you, this has been so many years. God, it's been a long time. I know, right? And we've been, we've been doing Too long, this. man. For real, man. And I appreciate <laughs> it, man. And, you know, I think, um, you know, this was the right time for me to be able to express it and have this combo with you. So I think the divine time is real. It's nothing yes. better than perfect time. And I feel I was able to get it off and say some things that were valuable to me about my dad, which was the time to say it. And Absolutely. just to have it on the record and be able to hear that back in the future means a lot to me as well. Absolutely. We're going to keep, you know, sending up prayers for his recovery and bring him home. Thank you, bro. Bless up. Bless to all my, my tribe. The tribe of, e, you know, the tribe. <laughs> the sure. Money tribe. The Shaw Money tribe. The Sh- Shaw Marley. I'm never going to forget that. Shaw Marley, yo. Yeah, <laughs> Sahin, Soraya, Sophia, Sadie, Sia, Sabrina, the whole squad, and B. We out of here. Beautiful. All right. Peace, brother. Peace, bro. Love, man. Appreciate you, bro. Same. I'll see you soon. Yep. All right. If you're enjoying Fathers Who Bother, please make sure to hit that subscribe button and follow us on Instagram at Fathers Who Bother and Twitter at Fathers Who Be. Thanks.